Accent lightings coming back with a vengeance and truck grill LED strips are no difference. Whether you're looking for the best product for your project or you just need some help understanding how it works and how to do the install, I'm here for you. My name is Chris with Headlight Revolution and I recommend the LED grill kit from Profile Performance. A couple reasons. These strips are super beefy, super bright, completely waterproof, and the kit comes with everything you need to light up the grill of your truck. This is the Grill Glow Kit from Profile Performance. It features two super heavy duty, super bright 24 inch flexible LED strips with 3M double sided tape on the back. It also comes with a controller and a remote. Here you can see it'll do red, green, blue, white, and a bunch of different colors that you don't even know the names of it. This is something that you're trying to put on your truck. I highly recommend this kit. It's also expandable. Let's say you wanted more than two LED strips. In just a second, I'm gonna show you how to do that. You can add a whole bunch of lighting to this setup. And at headlightrevolution.com, we also give you the option, if you don't want this little RF remote, you could do a Bluetooth controller too that could connect to rock lights, wheel lights, and more. The first step in doing this install is deciding where to put them. Whether you have them on the sides, on the top facing down, mounted on the bottom facing up, it gives a different look and that's totally your preference on how you want it. So I'd power these things up and I'd mock them up inside your grill and decide what you want. Now in a grill, it's almost impossible to light up the entire space and completely hide the strips. So don't let that bother you too much. Luckily with Profile Performance, the inside of the PCB on these is black. It's a really cool dark look and you don't really see them when they're turned off. Also, these are super heavy duty with this IP68 silicone casing around them. It doesn't matter if they get wet or frozen or muddy, it's all good. These things can take it. The controller itself is not waterproof, so that needs to be mounted inside the vehicle and all the connections are not waterproof. So it's a good idea to use a little specially formulated dielectric grease on all of your connections. Luckily, Morimoto has that green goo specifically designed for exposed connections for lighting wiring. Use that dielectric grease and a little bit of heat shrink and these will be impervious to any conditions you drive through. In case you want to expand this kit and understand all the different components that go into it, we're gonna go over that in just a second. But if you want to skip directly to the install, to see how it all works, skip ahead now. Regardless if you choose the pre-packaged kit on the website or you wanna build your own, or if you wanna add parts to your own, I wanna make sure that you know all the different parts and how they work together. First of all, you've got your strips. This is the 12 inch strip, part number LED292. Then you have the 24 inch strip, part number LED293. Next you have the extension. This long cord will plug in to each strip and go to the splitter that connects to the remote. This is part number H694. Next you have the splitter itself. This bare four wire connector with four JST splitters is part number H693. If you get the profile remote, you're also gonna need the CR2032 battery, which you can also purchase separately as part number LED155. The Profile Performance Prism Pilot Controller is part number LED760, and this is what the different connectors plug into. Now to power everything up, you're gonna need to tap into your fuse box or connect wiring to your battery. You do that with one of the three power connections from Profile. This one is the Mini Fuse Tap, part number WP324. If you have this type of fuse, you find an ignition or a battery fuse, and you replace it with this. As you can see, one side has your power with the fuse tap and a ground terminal that goes to your battery or any grounding point. And the other side has a grommet and two bare wires that plug into the controller. If you have a micro fuse style vehicle, you're gonna need part number WP329. It's the exact same thing, but it just has a different type of fuse tap. Here you can see the difference between the two. Make sure first you find out what type of fuses your vehicle uses and then get the right product. The mini fuse tap is part number WP324, and the micro fuse tap is part number W329. Now, if you don't want to do a fuse tap at all, you can just do a hardwire kit. 
That's part number WP323. Instead of having a fuse tap, it has an inline fuse and battery terminal wiring. These are very easy to either connect directly to your battery or cut the ends off and splice into the power source of your choice. And on the other side, you have bare wiring that goes to the controller. Because the Profile Prism Pilot remote isn't waterproof, it's really important to install the driver portion inside the vehicle where it can't get wet. So let's do that first. Once you've found a good dry place to mount the controller, you're gonna use a small Phillips screwdriver and take off the covers on either side. One side is going to have four connections that go to your LED strips, and the other side is going to have two connections for your battery or fuse box power. Now, if you're doing a single color LED strip, you don't need this controller at all. You mount your strips, run power to a switch, and you're done. But if you're doing an RGBW setup like this from Profile Performance, we need to get power to this controller. So let's start with that. On the side with two connections, you can see that it's labeled positive and negative. So the first thing is to open those screws up and then take whichever power wire you're using, whether it's the battery connection or the fuse tap. In this example, on this truck, we're using the fuse tap. And you put the black wire into the negative section and the red wire into the positive section. It says DC positive for the red wire and DC negative for the black wire. Once you get those wires plugged in, go ahead and tighten these up. Make sure that they're nice and snug so that if you gently pull on the wires, they don't come out, but don't go too far that you strip it. Now with this cable connected, we can run to power, either directly to the fuse box, the battery, or some other positive and negative power source. On the opposite side of the controller, we have four, and it's the same process. You just have to open them up and put the wires in according to their color. We have the red wire in the first position connected to R, the green wire in the second position connected to G, the white wire connected to the third position in B, and the black wire connected to the fourth position in V+. Other harnesses, instead of white, may have blue. In that case, it would be red, green, blue, black. Lastly, give it a little tug on each of the wires to make sure they aren't going to fall out. This connection and the power connection are going to be your two biggest pain points if you have issues with the system down the road. It's very easy that these small wires either don't get tightened enough, tighten too much and break, or they slide into a part of this assembly that's not actually holding it down and it doesn't make good contact. Tug on each one of these wires individually, very lightly, make sure it doesn't come out, and if it does, redo your connection. When you get your remote, if you want to, this is a carrier that you can either screw into something, Velcro to something, tape to something, and then your remote lives right in there like this. If you don't want that, you don't have to use it. You can just carry around the remote itself in your glove box or something like that. Next up is to connect your LED strips to your controller through this splitter. So the way this works is it gives you four outputs. This means that you can run four LED strips with this controller. If you do something that's close to your controller, you can connect it just like this directly to the controller. As long as your LED strip placement is near the controller, you don't need an extension. But if you run things further away from the controller and you don't want to splice your wiring, you can use that extension that we talked about earlier. It plugs in and then it gives you all of this extra wiring that will connect to your LED strip. You can do that four times and you can put these LED strips pretty much anywhere. Again, the way this works is step one, pick your power, either a universal battery terminal, a micro fuse tap or a mini fuse tap. That harness plugs into one side of your profile controller. Step two is the splitter. This is the four wire connector with bare wires that plugs into the other side of the profile controller and it has these four JST style connectors coming out of it. Step three is connect your strips to these four connections. Either use a splitter if you need extra length or connect the strip directly to the controller if they are near each other. Then turn it on and see what happens. On a lot of trucks, the first step is to remove the grill. That's how we have to do it on this Ford Super Duty, but that's not always the case. 
A Toyota Tundra, for example, sometimes has a grill that lifts up with the truck. Then run your power from the battery or the fuse box, whichever you choose, to the RGB controller. Remove the side panels of the controller, take the wires from the power harness, and with a flathead screwdriver, loosen the terminals on the controller and insert the wires in the positive and negative, respectively. Refer to the sticker on the controller for polarity on each wire. Next, grab the four-wire adapter that connects the JST connectors going from the controller and install those four wires on the other side of your controller. Make sure the plastic covers go back on and don't pinch any wires in the process. Connect the power harness to your battery or your fuse box red being positive and black being negative. Then take the extension harnesses and plug them into the splitter coming out of your controller. Those are gonna go all the way up to the grill and connect to each of your LED strips. The kit only comes with two, but if you wanted to add more, you could. At this point, everything should work as long as your power source is fired up. If your fuse tap is plugged into your ignition, you're gonna have to start the vehicle first. If it's tapped into the battery, you should be good to go. Press the power button on your remote control and run through the functions to find out what your new kit is possible of and make sure everything works. Now place each LED strip in the grill area where you think you want them and run through the functions. You can either zip tie them in place, connect it to a wire harness or bracket, or use a double-sided tape on the back to stick them to a clean, dry surface. It's really up to you how you position them, on the sides, on the top, on the bottom, whatever you think looks the best. When you put everything back together, make sure you're not pinching any wires or the LED strips. Where you mounted the strips or ran the wiring could be where a bolt or a clip from the grill goes. Now that you know everything works and the grill's back together, find a good location up and out of the way in a dry area to mount the RGB controller. Most of the time, you would do this with zip ties, or you can screw them into some plastic applications. We highly recommend professional insulation for this entire process. As you can see, this is no ordinary LED strip kit. This is specifically designed to light up the grill of any vehicle we just happen to show you on a truck. This is easily my favorite RGB controller. It's simple, it's easy to install, it's super trustworthy. And this is why at Highlight Revolution, we recommend the Profile Performance Grill Kit for your next project. And remember, with these kits, the sky's the limit. You can install tons of LED strips and expand your kit to light up anywhere on your truck. If you wanna see how to install the other kit from Profile Performance designed to go on the interior of your vehicle, check out that video on our channel.